The Jell-O program, coming to you from the stage of the Ritz Theater in New York City, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens a program with, oh gee, oh gosh, oh golly, I'm in love. When you come to the end of a perfect day, there's certainly a grand feeling of peace and contentment about it. And that same feeling of contentment applies to the end of a perfect meal. That is, if you find a bright dish of shimmering jello there to greet you. Jello, ladies and gentlemen, is really the ideal way to end the meal. It serves as a fitting climax to everything that has gone before, and it leaves you with a mellow mood of true satisfaction. Because jello is a swell looking, swell tasting dessert, gay with glorious colors, and rich with a tangy goodness as refreshing as the ripe fruit itself. So make your next meal a bang up success by serving jello in any one of its six delicious flavors. Incidentally, friends, this is National Restaurant Week, and I hope a great many of you will take the occasion to drop in at your favorite restaurant where you'll always find Jell-O, one of the most popular desserts in the menu. Be sure to ask for the Jell-O flavor you like best. Oh, gosh, oh, golly, I'm in love, played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to announce that tonight marks the ninth radio anniversary of our Master of Ceremonies. So without further ado, we bring you a man who for nine long years in the field of radio has worked, slaved, worried, and looks it, Jack Benny. <laughs> Don, despite your left-handed approach, I want to thank you for remembering my radio anniversary. Don's feet. Nine years of Yes, it is, Don, and six of them with the same sponsor. It's fun looking back, though. Well, tell me, Jack, when you made your radio debut, your first sponsor was Canada Dry Ginger Ale, wasn't it? Well, that was my first big program, Don. But before that, I did an early morning broadcast for Bixby's Bonnie Biscuit Batter. <laughs> For the lazy housewife. <laughs> Our slogan was Bixby's Batter, as light as a feather. <laughs> oh, it was very popular. Bixby's Biscuit Batter. I don't remember that program, Jackson. Well, Phil, as I was telling Don, we went on very early in the morning. From 7 to 7.05. <laughs> it's, uh... Just a short broadcast. Oh, well, that explains it. I seldom get up at 7 a.m. Phil, you seldom get in at 7 a.m. <laughs> We've been in New York now almost three weeks, and I'll bet you haven't been to bed once. Well, it ain't my fault. I can't find my hotel. <laughs> can't find your hotel? Phil, for your information, you checked in at the St. Moritz the first day we got in town. The St. Moritz? Yes. I better write that down. I gotta get some sleep tonight. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. So, Jack, getting back to Bixby's Biscuit Batter, what sort of a program was it? Did you give morning exercises and all that? Uh, no, Don. I used to read recipes and poetry. I was known as Happy Jack, your seven o'clock whistle. <laughs> and my theme song was so cute. Would you like to hear it, fellas? Sure. Do you remember it, Jack? Do I? I wrote it. Uh, get a load of this. <laughs> wake up. Wake up. Wake up, you little sleepy head. Get your body out of bed. It's Bixby batter time. Wake up, wake up. Oh, Mr. Smith and Mrs. Jones, do not be a lazy bones. It's Bixby batter time. Whether you sleep on your tummy or on your back, wake up with happy jack. It's seven one. <laughs> There. How's that, fellas? Well, to tell you the truth, Jack, that'd be pretty corny nowadays. Yeah. Corny nothing. That's class, bub. <laughs> Thanks, Hezekiah. 
Anyway, Don, my listeners liked it, and it was a pleasure to start each day off with a smile. But I can't understand how you could be Happy Jack at 7 o'clock in the morning. Oh, that was nothing, Don. Before I got that job, I was on another program that went on at 5 a.m. 5 a.m.? Yeah, the only fan letters I got were from Four Roosters and a Sleepwalker. <laughs> Anyway, it was good training. Say, Jackson, what's the name of my hotel again? The St. Moritz. Write it down. Anyway, Don. I wonder if I got a room with a bath. I hope so. <laughs> anyway, Don, it was good training, and it gave me a swell start in radio. Ah, oh, but I can't get over it. Broadcasting at 5 o'clock in the morning. You didn't have a sponsor then, did you? I certainly did. I was on the air for Newton's non-roll nightshirt. <laughs> Their slogan was, your kneesies will never feel the breezy. I was on the air for 13 weeks, and I think I'm the only guy that bought one of those nightshirts. And you're still wearing it. Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. And you're wrong again. I don't wear a nightshirt. I sleep in pajamas, coat and pants. And a cap. All right. I maybe have one outfit like that, and you make an issue of it. Well, you might at least congratulate me on my ninth radio anniversary. Oh, I'm sorry, Jack. Congratulations on your anniversary. And may you continue to spread joy and sunshine for many years to come. Well, thanks. You make that up yourself? No, that was on the telegram. I was too cheap to send you. Oh, well, it's a thought that counts, I guess. You know, Mary, you are. Hey, to... Jackson, what street is the St. Moritz on? <laughs> Central Park South, for heaven's sake. It's our last night in town. He's worrying about what hotel he's stopping at. Our last night in town. Are we going back to Hollywood tomorrow? Yep, first thing in the morning. Gee whiz, and I promised Mom I'd get over to Plainfield and see her again. I better call her up right away. Oh, yes, Mary. Your folks do live here in the East. How are they? Mom is fine. Pop is fine. My sister's married. And Uncle Otto, who came to visit us eight years ago, is staying for a third term. <laughs> well, there's all the news in a nutshell. Go ahead and call your mother up, Mary, and make it snappy. Okay. Hello, operator. Give me long distance, please. Hey, Don, have you seen Dennis around anywhere? Well, yes, Jack. He's there someplace. A uh, long distance? I want Plainfield, New Jersey, please. The number is 223J. Hurry it up, Mary. We got... Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. Congratulations on your radio anniversary. Well, thanks, Dennis. Say, what's that you're hiding in back of you? Oh, that's a cake I brought for you. It's got nine candles on it, one for each year. A cake? Well, well, that's just... Hello? Great. Hello, Peter's Meat Market? <laughs> Uh, will you please run upstairs and call Mrs. Livingston to the phone? Peter's Meat Market. Oh, is that you, Mr. Peters? This is Mary, remember? Oh, I'm fine. Say, Mr. Peters, do you still give away garters with leg of lamb? Mary, hurry up and get your mother. Uh, will you call Mama, please? Okay, I'll wait. How do you like the cake, Mr. Benny? Oh, it's swell, Dennis, and the candles are all lit, aren't they? Well, blow them out, Jack. It's your anniversary. Okay. Hold it steady, Dennis. Here goes. <laughs> hmm. Well, you got one of them. <laughs> yeah, hold it closer, Dennis. Here you are. <laughs> Darn it. Hello? Oh, hello, Mama. This is Mary. Look, Mama, I won't be able to come over tomorrow because we're leaving for Hollywood. <laughs> What's the matter with me? What's that, Mama? Oh, that's Jack. He's got asthma. I haven't got asthma. I'm trying to blow out these candles. Well, I'm ashamed to tell her. I'll get them. Don't worry. Listen, Mama, couldn't you come into New York tonight? The only chance I'll get to see you. <laughs> see him flicker, fellas? Morning. Oh, you saw Buck Benny rise again last night? Well, how do you like Jack as a cowboy? He what? <laughs> well, everybody else likes me. Now hang up. All right. Goodbye, Mama. See you tomorrow. You should stop asking your mother what she thinks of me. She's always got those same two words. <laughs> and what a delivery. Well, I don't like it. Now, Dennis, it's about time for a song, so go ahead. Okay, Mr. Benny. Aren't you going to blow out the rest of the candles? Never mind. Just sing your song. Everybody's so worried about me. <laughs> there. That got them. Doggone it. Here's the chair, Jack. You better rest for a while. <laughs> thanks, Mary. Thanks. <laughs> Where there's music, how faint the tune. Somewhere 
From Two for the Show, sung by Dennis Day. And Dennis, this is the last number you're going to do from New York. Next week, we'll be back home in California. Gee, it'll be good to see the sun again, won't it? <laughs> now, wait a minute, Dennis. It might have been raining and cloudy most of the time, but the sun was out all day today. I think that was just a publicity stunt for the opening of the fair. <laughs> That's possible. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as we announced last hey, week... Hey, Jackson, how do you spell St. Moritz? <laughs> Never mind, I'll take you there. <laughs> Heaven. And now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Phil, next time, stay at the YMCA. It's already spelled out for you. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, as we announced last week, tonight, the Benny, even our best friends won't tell us players... <laughs> will present their version of that well-known Wednesday night taffy pull, the Fred Allen Show, The Hour of Smiles. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Bean Blossom. <laughs> now, being a martyr, I will play the most unattractive part, that of Mr. Allen. Uh, Don Wilson will be Harry Von Zell, and Phil Harris will be Peter Van Steeten. You think you can handle the part, Phil? I don't know. I'm a little more blasé than he is. Well, at rehearsal, folks, he said blazy. <laughs> uh, you'll handle it all right, Phil. Now, let's see. Uh, who else do we need? Am I going to be in it, Jack? Yes, Mary. You're going to play the part of Portland Hoffa. Well, that's the best Hoffa I had today. <laughs> Mary, let's not get into Alan's type of material too soon. Now, Dennis? Yes, please? In our play tonight, you're going to be a bottle of salopatica. <laughs> well, go over in the medicine chest and sit down. Okay. Oh, boy, salopatica. What a kid. Gee, I wish I could be that happy. Why don't you empty your swimming pool and dive in? Thanks. Well, I guess we're just about set now. But, Jack, how are you going to play the part of Fred Allen? Your voice isn't anything like his. Don, all I have to do is put a clothespin on my nose. I've got one right here. And now, folks, this little satire will go on immediately after the next number, which will be played by Peter Van Harris and his dead canna troubadour. <laughs> Hit it, boy. <laughs> Thank you. 
That was Alice Blue Gown from Irene, played by Peter Van Harris and his orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our tabloid version of that Wednesday night weenie bake, that sand in the spinach of life, the Fred Allen Show. Mary, hand me that clothespin. Here you are, Jack. I want to Allenize my nose here. Wait a minute. Just a second. I want to get that on. Good. Let's see now. Me, 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 me. That's him, all right. Okay, let's go. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Harry Von Wilson welcoming you to the Hour of Groans. 60 minutes of eggs and music. Eggs with our star comedian, Fred Allen. Music with Peter Van Harris. And our three songbirds, the Merry Mucks. So duck, everybody. It's the Fred Allen Show. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's the man you've all been waiting for. The pride of Boston. That New England boiled comedian, Fred Allen, in person! Thank you, thank you, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) You know, Harry, a funny thing happened to me on the way to the studio tonight. Ho, ho, ho. I was walking down 6th Avenue, and a panhandler asked me for a dollar bill for a cup of coffee. A dollar bill? Yes, he claimed there was a hole in his pocket, and a coin would slip through. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> thank you, folks, thank you. Well, so much for good, clean fun, and now let us turn to the latest news of the week. Harlem, New York. This dusky community is still carrying on a celebration for Rochester Van Jones, butler to Jack Benny, the radio comedian. Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> News of the Week interviews Mr. Van Jones. Pardon me, Mr. Van Jones. I'm a reporter, and I'd like to ask you a few questions. Tell me, have you been having a good time up here in Harlem? Have I? This turban I'm wearing is full of ice cubes. <laughs> I see. Now, Mr. Van Jones, I understand you're in the employ of a Mr. Jack Benny. Is that correct? (laughs) I work for him, all right. Now, what sort of a man is Mr. Benny? He's very pleasant. Very pleasant. I see. Well, is he hard to get along with? Oh, no, sir. He's the finest man I ever met. Pure gold. Pure gold. (laughs) Uh-huh. Now, there are rumors, Rochester, that Mr. Benny is rather tight and you have trouble getting your salary from him. Is that true? Oh, no, sir. He not only pays me handsomely, but frequently. <laughs> I see. And you're sure of all of this is the truth? Definitely. Well. That clothes then don't fool me none. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, Mr. Van Jones, and I'll see you later. So long. So long, boss. That was Peter Van Harris playing. Da 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 da. And now, ladies and gentlemen, if I may be so bold. Oh, Mr. Allen! Mr. Allen! Well, look who's here. I'll be darned if it isn't Seattle. Hello! Well, that's quite a reception you've got, Tacoma. What's on your mind? Oh, Mr. Allen, the funniest thing happened to me on the way to the studio tonight. I was walking down 6th Avenue and a panhandler asked me for a nickel. Only a nickel? (laughs) Yes, he said he had his pants fixed with that dollar you gave him. Well, that's very funny, Spokane, and I wish this eagle would get off my hat. (laughs) Shoot! Now, what about our guest tonight? He's right here, Mr. Allen, and his hobby is a most unusual one. Really? <laughs> yes, this gentleman is an amateur street cleaner. Well, that's very interesting. How do you do, sir? Hiya, Chum. <laughs> now, young fellow, how did you happen to develop such an unusual hobby? Well, I tell you, Chum, I'm walking down the street one day, and all of a sudden I see some mug in a top hat throw away a longie. A longie? Yeah, a cigar. A butt that has possibilities. I see. So I picks it up, and I've been doing that ever since. Oh, you're a bump. 
Yeah. Well, one more won't hurt this show. Forty. Now tell me, my retriever of nicotine. <laughs> tell me, what type of man throw away stogies with the greatest possibility of salvage? Well, bankers mostly. But once in a while, I get some actor. Yes, actors are notoriously carefree. Yeah, all but Jack Benny. That guy don't throw him away till his bridge work is on fire. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Hmm. Well, thanks for coming up. Now get out. <laughs> Wait, fellow, wasn't he? Now, Harry. Yes, Fred. As the farmer said to the horse thief, ho, 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 where's my plug? Ladies and gentlemen, we now take you to a typical American home. The husband speaks. Oh, Lulu, where's that tube of Ipana? It's right there, honey, right behind that bottle of sal hepatica. There's nothing behind me. <laughs> Dennis, screw your top off. <laughs> Well, Lulu, I gotta brush my teeth. All right, then run down to the drugstore and get some Ipana. Young man, as long as you're on your way to the drugstore, don't forget to stop at your neighborhood grocer and buy a package of Jell-O. It is economical, easy to make, and comes in six delicious flavors. You tell them, Harry. And remember, young man, <laughs> insist on genuine Jell-O and look for the big red letters on the box. <laughs> Well, so much for sponsorial spouting. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, our own musical madcaps, the Merry Mucks, will render a special arrangement of that popular song entitled, She Was Only a Pipe Maker's Daughter, But Oh, What Stems. Swing it, Mucks. Ma, he's making eyes at me. Ma, 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 he's awful nice to me. Ma, he's almost breaking my heart. I'm beside him. Be my honey. Be my honey. Dot around, dot around, dot around. He's leaning on my shoulder, Ma. He's kissing 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 Ma. All right, for heaven's sake. My goodness. Well. We gotta break it up tonight. <laughs> He's making eyes at me, sung by the Merry Mucks. And now, ladies and gentlemen, oh my goodness, look at that man in the control room waving his finger at me. Our program is running overtime, folks, but that always happens. I ad lib like mad. <laughs> but we still have a few minutes left for the question of the week. This is Mr. and Mrs. Average Man's Roundtable, where three persons selected from our studio audience are invited to give their opinions on a question that concerns some prominent issue of the day. These little sessions are entirely unrehearsed. Oh, yeah? Portland. Continue, Harry. Fred now takes his place at the roundtable, where he meets his fellow debaters for the first time. Ready, Fred? <laughs> I'm all set, Harry. Uh, where are the three participants tonight, Portland? Right there, Mr. Allen. The first one is Mr. Abner J. Lum of Inner Zipper, Alabama. Good evening, Mr. Lum. Hello, Ma. <laughs> Our next guest is Miss Minnie Tonka of Minneapolis, Min. Minnie Tonka. Well, glad to have you with us, Miss Tonka. Tonka very much. <laughs> Now, who's our third guest, Porty? Oh, there I go, ad-libbing again. The name is Blur here, Mr. Allen. I can't make it out. Oh, yes. What's your name, Mr., uh, Mr.? Jerkfinkle. <laughs> oh, fine. Yes, the name is Logan Jerkfinkle. <laughs> well, I might as well make the best of it. Now, Logan... Here's the question of the week. Quiz me, kid. <laughs> All right, here it is. Do you think the National Labor Relations Board presents the optimum hope for the... Oh, my goodness, there's that man in the control room again. With all my ad-libbing and everything. I suppose we won't have time for the question. Wait, I'll find out. 
Have we got time for the question, Tommy? I don't know. Hey, Eddie, have we got time for the question? I don't know. Hey, Phil, have we got time for the question? I don't know. Hey, Phil! Let it go! Let it go! I forgot what it was anyway. My goodness, play, Peter. I must stop this ad libbing. <laughs> Ladies, do you ever find yourself at a loss when it comes to thinking up something new for dessert? Well, then here's something you'll be mighty glad to know about. A few months ago, we introduced on this program a swell new Jell-O recipe. It's called Jell-O Pudding Whip. Perhaps you've already tried it, judging from the letters that we've been getting, practically everybody has. But just in case you haven't heard about it, let me recommend Jell-O Pudding Whip as a mighty special treat, and one that's downright easy to prepare. And here's how it goes. Take one package of Jell-O, any flavor... And one package of Jell-O vanilla pudding. And make them up as you usually do. Then chill the Jell-O and whip as directed on the box. Next, chill the Jell-O vanilla pudding and add to it whipped Jell-O, beating constantly until blended. Then mold and get all ready to enjoy something really distinctive, really delicious. It's a treat that's truly out of the ordinary. So the next time some special occasion calls for a special dessert, remember Jell-O pudding whip, a unique combination of creamy Jell-O vanilla pudding... And Jell-O. This is the last number of the 31st program, darn this close in, in the current Jell-O series, and we will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time, broadcasting from Hollywood, California. Mary, help me pull this clothespin off. Oh, leave it there. On you, it's becoming... <laughs> All right. Good night, folks. This is the National Broadcasting Company.